The author of the passage discusses receptor fatigue in line 24, primarily in order two. Now this is a very tough question, not because of the passage, but because of the answer choices. And I think it's really the first four. One of them is right, though it's, it's here where we should focus because the one that's not right is definitely very seductive and alluring. And I think a lot of people chose one of these three. When I say one of these three, one of these three wrong answers. So anyhow, let's get to the actual passage and take this apart. It's talking about receptor fatigue. And what it says here, again, looking at the context, broader context, I'm gonna start all the way around 17, just because if you go too close to where the lines are quoted receptor fatigue, then you may not quite get everything around it. So again, we're going for context, we're starting at line 17, reading where it says, however. However, exposures to odors in natural environments often occur over far longer periods and result in adaptations that may differ from those that are short term. So I'm kind of paraphrasing that. But now we get that's what, also what you want to do as well when you're reading for context. And then we get to this idea here. For example, studies show that brief exposures to a, to a smell create receptor fatigue. So already just a little bit of exposure, we get receptor fatigue. Prolonged exposure, even more long lasting results. So it goes beyond receptor fatigue. It doesn't mean, oh, you don't experience re receptor fatigue or you only experience receptor fatigue, but you experience that and a lot more. It goes deeper, as it says, into higher central, higher up in the central nervous system pathway. Okay, so that's important for me to decode that already as I go through the answer choices, starting with A, explain the physiological processes through which long-lasting reductions in responses are thought to be produced. And again, why? Because we're talking about receptor fatigue at first just in the context of short-term exposure. And long-term exposure goes beyond that. So cannot that is receptor fatigue cannot wholly account for these long-lasting reductions. B, provide an example of a process that subjects would probably not experience during a prolonged period of odor stimulation. Now, the thing is, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, they wouldn't experience this. But again, you ex you doesn't say that. It just says the effects of long term exposure go beyond that. So you can experience it, but you experience a lot more. So out with B. Let's look at C. Help illustrate how the information gathered from most olfactory research may not be sufficient to describe the effects of extended exposure to odors. So why is this the case? Why is this the answer? Well, because we talk about receptor fatigue in the context of short-term exposure, but because long-term exposure goes beyond that, receptor fatigue is not sufficient if you really want to understand what's going up at higher levels of the central nervous system, and therefore C is the best answer. D, also an alluring one, show how studies of short-term olfactory adaptation have only accounted for redu reductions in response that follow relatively brief absences from an odorous environment. Oh, that sounds perfect. That's just what the passage was talking about. Yes, the passage was talking about that before, but not here in the second paragraph where we're dealing with receptor fatigue. So D is true about the passage, but doesn't answer the question, which is a lot more specific. And therefore, again, our answer is C.